Yeah, All so right. I need a review on the data flow and PR. Uh, it's done. And um, uh, I was going through the chatbot example in a new virtual land, mm -hmm. and it doesn't detect the ini source, so it needs that to load the secrets. So how do you install that? Do you? Hmm. That's interesting. Um. Other than that, like it's one of the step. All the other steps are working, but yeah, I'm stuck there. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Um, still need review on um, on the app district. Okay. And then let's see. And then check back. Yeah. And check. Any source one more, and one more peer, like the uh, oh. CLA data for and comments. It's complete. It's pretty oh, small, great. like what we discussed in the last meeting. Cool. Yeah, I also updated the webhook tutorial. I see. Great. Yeah. And that's, that's it for me. Awesome. Okay. And Sakshan? Yeah, I'm still waiting on your reviews for my pull requests. Same as last uh, the last meeting. And I'm also catching up and studying on the deep neural network stuff for the layer support. Like we talked in last. Okay, meeting. great. I may not have submitted this for you. Damn it! Yeah, I forgot to go and hit submit. Ah, uh, okay. Um, yeah. Let me just make sure of that. Also, the entry point names are are they okay? Because they're kind of. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think these are good. At the end, there are like uh, underscores, a lot of underscores there. Yeah. Here? Yeah. Mm, yeah, I mean, I don't think that's, I mean, I think, I think being consistent with what, you know, people think the name is, is good to do, right? So, if the, they've oh. named it with underscores, then... We might as well be consistent, right? Also, like, uh, have you had the chance to like work on the layer support tutorial you were talking about last meeting? No, I have not. Sorry, but I will get to that. Um, let's see. So let me make a note for that too. Um, hey, Sudarshana, how's it going? Right, let's see. Um, okay, so we've got um, PyTorch. Let's review. Um, Am I audible? Yes, now you are. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, and okay. And then there was one more, wasn't there? Um, oh, the get single. Oh, get single. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah, this was just, I just needed to merge this, I think. Unless, was there something weird with the CI? Uh, maybe that's what's going on. I think there's something weird with all the CI, if I remember correctly. Yeah, Might there's just... a temperature flow thing or something. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that was that's been very annoying. Uh, yeah. Damn it. Okay. We'll yeah, the tensor floor and the transformers fail often. Yeah. What the hell? There is a dependency issue. Uh, actually, yeah, there's a dependency is... issue with transformers now, right? Yeah. yeah, that's the newest ridiculousness. I was looking at that yesterday, and that was driving me insane. Um, TensorFlow 2.3 is installed, but it's not supporting uh, NumPy 1.191. <sighs> so it only supports 0 .0. All right, so we're going to need to. Concept. Yeah, we're going to need to pin it then. Um, okay. Great. Okay, we'll merge this one. Uh, okay, then I'll up, uh, update the flower classification example. Okay, great. So... Um, and then... Um, so you will update the flower classification example after that, um, and then let's see. So, and this is, yeah, this is the flower one. Yeah, it just needs updating regarding the new get single mm -hmm. dictionary feature. Okay. And then let's see. All right, and is there anything else you want to talk about? Uh, no, no, just uh, I'm just waiting on that uh, layer support example, and then I'll move forward with the. Uh, All right. Uh, with That's good to know. Also, like uh, I was checking the PyTorch uh, documentation, and there are like segmentation and uh, uh, detection uh, models too. Oh, they already have some. Like, you mean pre-trained or just like pre-built yes, layers? Pre okay. In okay. Um, so, so should I add them? I mean, yeah. If you, yeah, if you, if you. Yeah. Them yeah, I mean, it sounds, I would assume it's going to be similar to the way that you did these, right? So you might as well throw them, yeah. like you can, we'll merge this and then we'll get them in the, in the next PR on that one, right? All right. On that set of models. Right, okay. Adding, um. Yeah, I'm really excited to add that uh, object detection with bounding box examples. Yeah, that'll be sweet. That'll be really cool. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's all for me. I'm still uh, learning this stuff right now. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Great, great. All right, Hamachu, where are you at? Uh, yeah, so I made the changes and that you mentioned in the spacey model. Okay. Uh, but the, yeah, so NumPy version, that is the concrete tank in that space, yeah, is failing. Okay. And, uh, and then, uh, yeah, then I'm working on example uses and another spacey model. So these are the things. Okay, so. You already reviewed it. Uh, Okay, is it good to go now? Let's see. Yeah, you can check once though. Yeah, let's just quick check. Okay. Oh yeah, this is yeah. Um. Okay. Well, let's see. Now it looks like we need to do change lock, and then yeah, let's just go ahead and merge that. So. Okay, sweet. Um, yeah, okay, so update with change log. Are 
if you could, can you do that right now, or and then we can just make sure yeah. that this is done. Yeah. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah, I will do it. I will do it. And then let's see. Um, yeah, so, I'm uh, then I'm working on uh, example uses, and that we discussed last time, and and oh, yeah, this simple. Right. Okay. And is that all from your friend? Uh, yeah. This is, this all right. Is cool. And Sarasana, is there anything you wanted to talk about, or? Uh, no, John. Nothing in particular. Uh, I just joined to see what's happening. Cool. Cool. Um, let's see. Um, great. All right. Um. Let's start running through these. So, um, da, 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 da. so let's go with why is the chatbot example not detecting any source? Do you want to display your screen? Yeah. Is it visible? Yes. Uh, yeah. So, uh, if you run it from like a Python, if you run the Python script, it uh, shows this error, and the other one is. Like, uh, uh, it looks like. So it looks like. <clears throat> well, it's it's um. So we've got the old version of the of DFML installed here, right? Yeah. Um, so you're going to need to install the development version into your virtual environment here that you're testing it in. Oh, so uh, do we need to mention that in the tutorial? So currently, I just no, did because install when... HTTP and install DFML model SkyKit. Well, so that's right. So that will work when it's the released version, right? Okay. Um, so yeah, so that's sort of the thing you gotta you gotta be thinking about. All right, so we've got the current development version, and then until we release the next version, then all this stuff, you know, when you do oh, pip install okay. DFML, you're getting the last version, okay. right? And okay. so you, we're gonna make so yeah, so give it the path to well, you're gonna actually need to uninstall first um, because. Um, just that's that's this works, right? yeah you usually want like dash y oh okay yeah dash y will make it uh, not ask you for that and then do dffml anything you might have installed i'm not sure if you can do star um like df or pip uninstall dffml because any source is within dffml so yeah Try that. This is wrong. I don't think I have installed anything else. Okay. Yeah. So then just do pip uninstall the FFML. Yeah. And then, you know, give it the do a pip install dash e and then the path to wherever it is in your, you know, your development environment. And now you should end up with the any source. Oh. Oh, is is it trying to? Why is it doing that? Why is it trying to install ourselves? Uh. Well. It looks like, well, you've imported NATS, but we haven't declared it as a dependency because um, no, uh, you're checked yeah, out version. Okay. It looks like you have oh, whatever uh, branch you're on is the NATS branch, basically. Uh, yeah, there's the, the NATS file, so the, I can, if I, does it work if I delete it? I would just check out, like, Whatever. Oh, no, the, it's it's a it's a test file which I was messing around. I haven't committed or anything. Okay, well let's see. I mean, it must be yeah, it's I in the I repo basically, it. right? Yeah, That's the issue. This one. Yeah. So. Yeah. 
I don't need this. Well, it looks like it's under, let's see. Yeah, it's under dffml slash distributed slash nash. So why don't you do a git status? Uh, no, I don't. I never commit those files. So it's a dot file. So that uh, just my buffer file when I try. Oh, to okay. So you have like a global ignore for that or something. Okay. All right. Okay. Where this is better. Um, okay. let's see. I might have overcome to import that. Yeah, I think I can take it from here. Okay, cool. All right, sweet. Yeah, you're seeing you're seeing exactly what I I think I was hoping that you would see is that we just would need to make sure that all of the pieces are there for people to copy paste oh. from. So. Yeah. Thanks. Bro. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, that's like one. Of, that's one of the things that I've noticed is is the harder part about writing to the tutorials is that like you're you've got one copy, you want to display another copy, and then you don't you you know especially if you use the lines thing, then you it's you get, the chances are you're going to end up forgetting some of the lines, and then they copy paste it, and it doesn't work. Um, so it's. Uh, it's a typical, typical, typical thing to run into. Um, so, let's see. so or no. Uh, John, I can't hear you. Um, can you hear me now? No. Uh, can you Can you all hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Oh, can you guys yeah. hear me? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's see. Uh, John, I updated the change log. Okay. Great. So the issue was having needed needed to have development version installed in VNV. Um, okay, get single PR. Uh, John, I think you're not. Uh, I can't see your screen. Oh Can yes, no. Yeah, sorry, I was forgot to represent again after that. All right. Um. Okay. Sorry, just let me just make sure that our meeting minutes are clean here. Okay, so webhook tutorial. Um, data flow. All right, so okay. All right, no, we've got our stupid. Uh, All right, so we need to go pin TensorFlow, you were saying? Because they did a release. It's always a game of who, who freaking did a release and trying to figure out which one needs to be pinned. Yeah, so TensorFlow has 2.3, and they don't support uh, NumPy 1.19.1. Okay. All right, OK. Let's go pin them then. All right, so less than 2.3 then. All right, um, second, one second. Okay, um, okay. Um, sorry, one second.
one second. <coughs> Oof. All right. Okay. Um, let's see. So need to have a new Tumblr version. Okay. Um, um, John, is is this similar to the one we faced with SciPy as well? Like, yeah, uh, yeah. If you remember when we had to pin it. Thank you. Um, yeah. Yeah. This is. Let's see. Um, it's very similar. And we've been we've been running into these like a few times now. And this is like. Yeah, this is very annoying. Um, let's see if we can find a stack trace because it would be good to record. Um, what the hell is going on here? Um, because, yeah, okay, so how did you, Hamachu, how did you determine, um, how did you know that it was, it was TensorFlow causing it? Uh, yeah, so, uh, if you lo look in the previous error log. Oh, yeah. Duh. That's what I was just trying to do. Thank you. Okay, on this one it's on install. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, well that that's yeah that's much clearer clearer what the hell is going on. See, I think I was looking at like what was I looking at? Maybe I was even looking at this or something. It was like it was running an example. Oh yeah, this is what I was looking at, and I was just like, how the hell are we going to figure out what is incompatible here? <laughs> um, oh. Right. Because this is just, yeah. for some reason, it didn't get it on install. Oh, I guess it says TensorFlow. Um, but I didn't yeah, know it, it what... It has both TensorFlow. Yeah. Okay, I couldn't figure out what was the other package that it was incompatible with, right? I guess NumPy. But I was wondering, you know, where is NumPy 1.19.1 coming from was my main thing. Because um, I'm assuming somebody is pinning NumPy 19.1, right? Um, it would be really nice... Yeah. To understand. I mean, Sudarsana, you found that tool, right? That that gives us the dependency tree, um, pip depth tree, yeah. right? Or something. Yeah. Yeah, that would be. Uh, yeah, it would be nice if we could go through and and do. Some I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, but but, uh, but if we already have the pip depth tree that we can use, then like, uh, what if? Then what about the issue that we have? The should I yeah, have that issue. See? Yeah, that issue yeah. probably needs to go away. I mean, the idea is basic. Well, the idea is essentially the same thing. Well, it's okay. So the idea is not just the dependency tree like that. It's it's to resolve all these version numbers. That was the idea behind this one. Um, and so that 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 is that's that's why it's sort of still still desired as something we might do, um, but. I haven't talked to um, um, Rahul in a while. Uh, he wanted to do that, um, but I haven't. I don't think he's had any bandwidth for. He was going to do some kind of solver on it to to figure it out. Um, but yeah, that's I don't. I haven't heard from him on that in a while. So, um, anyways, but I'm going to copy paste this giant stack trace in here, or just this line so that we have an issue that tracks what happened here. Um, and then we'll close it because we'll just pin it. Um, let's see. Oh, and oh, now I understand. How you deduce that to Hamachu is that if it's failing on the transformers, then it must be transformers. That okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, for now we can if, if we can pin the TensorFlow to two point two, then it should work. Yeah, let's. Otherwise, see that. Uh, the better thing is uh, we need to pin NumPy, but for now we can pin TensorFlow. Yeah, I think that sounds good. Uh, da, 
You should be doing that thing. It's not doing that thing anymore. All right. Okay. Um, let's see. So, still need to do that. Okay. Let's check out the dataflow one run command PR. So. We probably need to put this, I guess, and you might reuse this somehow. Okay, great. I was like, we need to put that damn thing in a function. Um, sweet. Context and results. Context results. Okay. All right, so yeah, let's basically if you underscore something that says I'm not using this to static type or checkers and stuff, um, or not to static type checkers, to linters and things like that. Um, so if you are using it, don't underscore it. Um, let's see. Nice. Sweet. Sweet, 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 sweet. Very nice. Made short work of that. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's just make this like context stuff or something because we need to what is it with the other one um it's input def or something or no i guess this does get converted to have a hyphen so we still need to fix that never mind um Context stuff. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, and then the only other thing is that you have spaces in between these, but this would be the only place where we have spaces in between fields. So let's just, uh, for consistency, I remove spaces between fields for consistency. All right, great. So this looks good, just like a couple things. Oh, and then there was, uh, yes, got to watch out for spaces here um, at the end of this line. We got one here, but it looks like we missed one here. And then we should also show this syntax within the 
CLI documentation. That sound good? Nice job, Hagen. So, webhook tutorial. Um, where did the webhook tutorial go? There we go. Sweet. Nice, nice, nice. Cool. And GitHub's happy with this? Again. Like it, it, it says if you say status two hundred with any body, it's happy. We can't hear you, but I will assume that's a yes. Okay. Um. Let's see. Great. And yeah, okay. Okay. I figured that was how what happened. So um, I think let's see. Let's see. Well that's a bummer about your mic. Um, but that's okay, I think. I mean, you could try. You could try rejoining, um, but let's see. Other matters, or we can just we'll watch the chat. So, hello. Yes. Am I audible now? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's working. Sweet. So, like, as long as it sends a response, it's okay. All right. Earlier, great. it wasn't sending a response, so it was yeah. Showing a timeout. Yeah. This doesn't do anything until it runs the whole data flow, right? Okay. Yeah. I love this. Okay, this is very exciting. I was playing around with Heroku recently and just like how, how nice that is. And I was just, I was thinking about this and, and how nice this is and how we need to expand, expand upon this, make it, make it even more like, you know, figure out how to do. I've, have you guys seen that? The, the next thing I want to do is, is uh, uh, use Caddy Server. Have you guys seen Caddy Server? Uh, no, I haven't. Okay. Yeah, we no. should we should check this out. So it's it's like it's great. Um, basically, they they have um, uh, let's see where it is they have auto TLS. This is why I really like it because they do um, automatic TLS on everything, and it functions as a great. It's it's a great reverse proxy, um, easy reverse proxy that will do TLS on all your subdomains and things, and set up all the certificates and automatically renew them and everything for you, um, and it can reverse proxy like all of the things like HTTP two web sockets whatever, um, which is the main reason why I like it so much along with the TLS thing. Um, and then it can also serve static files. It can do. It can do lots and lots and lots of things. It's very fully featured. Um, let's see. Yeah, and it has these little config to, uh, little config files. 
Um, and the latest thing is, so they have these little config files, but it also is configurable um, via an HTTP uh, port, like another port. Um, so one port serves and then the other port configures. So you can sort of add new hosts and stuff on the fly. And uh, yeah, it's very, it's, it's sweet. It's very sweet. So basically the idea would be we take the stuff that we have, um, you know, that, that existing tutorial that where it starts the Docker container, but essentially add a few more operations and uh, these operations know how to interact with Caddy. So throw these operations in the data flow and basically say, okay, start that Docker container, but start it, you know, with some kind of, um, like, let's see, how would we do this? Well, we'd want to start all, we'd want to start it, we'd create like a network and then we'd start the new containers in the network and the main container would be this caddy container running and that one is the one with the port exposed and then we re have it reverse proxy to the other containers within this within this network which with docker you can create like an isolated you can create different networks for different containers to be attached to and then only those containers can see other containers on their network um and the host of course um so, so the server will act like the main one and the others are like services exactly that exactly what thinking. yeah so basically you could have your one because because the idea of, right we're just trying to make this super super easy for people to stand stuff up and start using it right so, oh, so you, they can add like services on the play exactly and exactly oh, every yeah, so you would just go add new webhooks to different repos, and it would say, okay, this is a new repo. You know, let me go deploy all those data flows and have Caddy reverse proxy all the different data flows. Um, you know, and it'll appear as one server. You know, maybe different subdomains or different URLs are getting reverse proxied um, to different actual containers running with whatever the service is that is that data flow, right? Um, so that's sort of like the next step in building out that 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 tutorial or sequence of tutorials that you have there right because right now it's it's one it's uh it's the one container um yeah can we make an issue to track this yeah i well, want to focus yeah yeah it's it sounds cool it would be cool yeah okay that's great uh, let's see hey how's it going sudhanshu Um, so set up. Right. Modify. Um, So the idea here is to add more operations to deploy operations um, so that um, one could have a server uh, where the uh, running one container per um, uh, repo uh, web hooked repo with the only container that has ports exposed being a caddy container, um, then uh, whenever a new um, uh, webhook repo is set up to point to this server for configuration. Uh, we configure caddy using its uh, configuration port to um, 
configure caddy using its configuration port to um, expose the new service via a reverse proxy root. All right. All right, um, let's see. Okay, webhook tutorial merged. Okay, um, let's check, check, check. Oops. Okay. Um, let's see, these aren't really checkboxes. So let's see, actually, waiting on layer support is a checkbox. Oops. So uh, yeah, did you? I still have not received the review for the PyTorch model. Yeah, thanks. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's let me let me finish out because I had some comments and then I think I had more comments and I never got around to um, getting back and adding more comments. Um, so sorry about that. Let's see. So yeah. Okay. It's, it's review. Um, okay. And so, Sudhanshu, what did you, did you have, let's see, you had a pull request and what else did you want to talk about today? Uh, yes, so uh, actually I wanted to discuss about uh, uh, how to like move forward. Okay. I uh, have some, some, some uh, questions and concerns I'd like to clarify. Right. Sounds good. Okay. Um, let's see. Single PR PyTorch needs review. Okay. So let's just finish out the PyTorch review here real quick. Um, okay. Um, Okay, did you grab these? Were you copy pasting this from somewhere? I think there are, I don't know if they're important, but uh, I guess somewhere it, uh, the stuff was not working without them. Hmm, that's interesting. Um, let's see. Uh, John, what does that actually do, the future module? Well, is it, it for it, some backward compatibility or something? It it has to do with in Python 2.5 when we let's see. Well, I guess let's see. I know what it used to do in Python 2, but uh, let's see. Let's just find out because I'm not sure. Um, it's a real module that serves three purposes: avoid confusing existing tools that analyze import statements and expect to find modules they're importing. Ensure that future statements run under releases private to run, run, run runtime exceptions. Okay, well, that's obviously not here. Document when incompatible changes were introduced and when they will or were made mandatory. So, some executable documentation. Um, yeah, my understanding of this was this was. Let's see. This was something that, yeah, we did in Python 2 when we needed the, the print statement and, as a function. Um, and then I don't know what the hell division is, but this looks like it's very old. <laughs> um, so I don't think we need that one. And I don't think we need this one either. So that's curious to me why it would be breaking. Um, because, yeah, these are these are things that, that like, um, my understanding is that they would okay. So the way that the Python Python development cycle works is that 
they right now you know there's like there's a bunch of different versions of python 3 right and then the whole big deal was that we stopped no more work on python 2.7 right um and what that means is basically all these so when they come out within the first version of something it's you know it's you know 2.7.0 or 3.7.0 right it's whatever point zero is the last one the dot release um and so each everybody has their own um let's let's talk about this because this might be good to have in the notes um let's see yeah i think uh, i had the problem in the beginning i don't think it will be a problem now okay so i think i'll remove them so i just search and they are just uh, these are just basically for cross compa compatibility with Two, with Python, Python two, two. And yeah, that makes sense. All right, so um, so let's just go. Let's fin we'll finish going over this. So essentially, um, um, Python does uh, x y t releases um, when uh, we when they introduce a new feature in uh so when they introduce a new feature in one of the future releases like say so say they had 3.5 right and we're there we're working on 3.5 i believe they were two releases behind so they're working on 3.5 they're working on 3.6 and they're working on 3.7 right and as soon as they finish um at, at some point in time, I think they have a defined cycle, like every three months or something. At some point in time, like they get to the end of this defined cycle, and now they're only working on 3.6, 3.7, and 3.8. And so now 3.5 is just whatever it was, right? So they're, they're not going to do any more bug fixes on that. And you can see that if you go, if you go to the Python bug tracker, for example. Um, where's a good one? Um, Oh yeah. Um, uh, what is that one? Um, I just looked at one the other day. That's like a good example of this. Um, let's see, Windows. It's like a Windows. Protractor. I don't think it's a protractor event loop. I think I'm. It's not a. Uh, let's see, what is that Windows events? Oop. Or maybe maybe that one async IO. Yeah, maybe it's this. Okay, yeah, versions. Uh, how about the async IO unit test one? Um, let's see, where did it go? Um, I am sure I should get this one more, but it's a good example because I know what it is at least. Um, let's see where it is. What is that? Um, okay. Um, what does it say? Okay, so basically, okay, so basically, they'll when they have a bug, they'll decide. For example, async IO, like in the standard library, there's no way to do um, the. That's why we have to have that async test case class, right? Um, because there's no async test case in the standard library. Well, so. Uh, Basically, I submitted this bug, right? And then they come through and they say, well, um, what did they say? Um, somewhere in here they talk about, basically they decide that, they decide which versions they're actually going to fix this in, right? And it depends on whether this is um, a new, a new, um, feature right so in this one technically it's a new feature so they were only adding it yeah so they wanted they wanted to add it in 3.8 um, 
and so then it only get added in 3.8 because I think they were still working on 3.8 at the time and now they're working on 3.9 so basically since it, if it's a new thing it only gets added in like whatever the current one they're working on is and I believe they're currently working on 3.9 um, I think yeah um, and so basically when when they introduce one of those new things right and it's one of these I think that's what they're saying when they say um, now I really lost that tab. Um, but when they said a, like, it's a language breaking thing, right? So that's why it's the very first statement is because the first thing the interpreter is going to see is, okay, well, this is going to be like the print statement, right? So the, the print statement is going to cause a lot of problems. Um, you know, you can't import that later on. It needs to be, it happens, it needs to happen before any other imports, right? Because as soon as you, you change, make that change, um, then, right, if you weren't to do that, then it's going to treat all the print statements as if, um, as if they shouldn't be a function call, right? And and when you say from future import print, then it was making it as a function call. Um, and so when they added it in a new version, then when they have that, they have that little dot release version, right? This little the what the Z, right? And so that that's like a bug fix thing. So they are still working on that. If you look at like the downloads, yeah. So um, bug fix security security end of life. Right, so they're no longer working on um, the the 2.7 series, right? But they are working on 3.8, 3.7, 3.6, 3.5, and then 3.9 is the active development version, right? Um, so they, let's see, let's see, July. Yeah, so they've been working on, okay, and 3.8. So then you can see they come through here and, and on about a, a four month cadence they release a new dot release this last number right and when they do that if they added a language breaking statement in like 3.9 for example the one you don't see here because that's the active git branch then they might in the dot release add some like that thing the ability to import that from future does that make sense yes all right. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, then and that's also that's like yeah that that's yeah that's the gist of that. Um, in there. Uh, get tree. Um, they'll um, sometimes they'll um, uh, when they. Release a new, uh, new versions uh, that are not UOL end of life. Um, they'll and it's a language, and it's something that would break all the code unless the interpreter knows about right off the bat. Let's put it top. Um, then they add it to future uh, module of the oops, I deleted the Z. Okay. Um, okay. Um, da, 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 da. So yeah, let's remove that. Um, a long bit of discussion for. Let's delete that line. <laughs> And then let's delete it wherever else it was too. Um, I think in this next one. Okay. Um, da, 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 da.
Okay. So this only supports single feature? Yeah, just uh, one array of image that are not more than uh, one. Oh, yeah, duh. Yeah. Um, these are pre trained models, obviously. Okay. Um, da, 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 da. All right, so So you're validating at every step? Is that what's going on? Yeah, I've given an option like uh, if the if the user gives a validation split, mm -hmm. then it will do validation alongside training. Okay. Um, interesting. Um, So, all right, and so the idea is basically just that you end up with the best model because whatever the, okay, um, cool. Um, let's see. Um, I'm just trying to think because, let's see, what is the way that, the, okay, data loader, data set. Okay, and once again, it's like a... God, I wish there was a better way that we could um, take the... Uh, yeah? Better way uh, for what exactly? Yeah. Well, uh, actually, uh, actually, we can put this under the same issue that we have already opened regarding TensorFlow TF.data. So we can use that for this uh, input and trade and validations things so the tensorflow thing yeah so we have one issue right uh, tf dot data uh, we need to migrate tensorflow oh yeah yeah so uh, so the tensorflow is all uh, started supporting pytorch also so using okay. tf dot data we can use in pytorch also so maybe that because they have a lot of things yeah yeah you caught on i was talking about the data loader right and that's what you're talking about too yeah Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. So basically, maybe that may be of that may be of help. Uh, I mean, Saksham, uh, you have to check, but I think that will be of help. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll take a look. Yeah. Cool. Um, because yeah, that's what I'm wondering here is is um, what a, what a yeah can we that that yeah my my main thing that I'm thinking about so so we can we can do TensorFlow first and then we can we can do this one right um yeah um so because it's not critical i think this looks good um the main thing i'm thinking about here is that is that you know we've got i mean and this is just a thing that we have with a lot of models right now is that we're loading everything in memory right um and ideally we we wouldn't load everything into memory right um yeah because yeah. that's just <laughs> some machines don't have much, that much memory, right? Um, and then a large point of this, the, with the sources and the async and everything, is the fact that we could stream everything in and out, right? Um, I think right now the only thing that we actually have the capability to do that with is the Dal for Pi thing. Um, so, but that happens to be just because they have this streaming API that works well um, with the way they just that was a happy accident. Um, most other libraries are not quite as 
that's, uh, that's nice um, in that respect. Um, so let's see. Yeah. Okay. Sadly, that has no neural networks. So. Um, okay. So yeah, we'll just add it to here, and we'll say um, uh, notes. Or let me just put it in the description. So. Note, let's also modify um, PyTorch. Okay. All right. All right. The rest of this looks good. Um, Although we should probably move this in front of the place where we go through and actually do this on every single record. And data set X calls Y calls. Okay, wait. Um, features, applicable features. Did I put this? Where did I? Okay. Yeah, so let's nix. I mean, this is, this is, this, this, I mean, this amounts to this, right? So, um, although... Yeah, let's see, classification, classifications. Um, I think that you have things in here. Let's see, yeah, oh yeah, and I said this. Um, okay. I mean... It works. Um, I think there's a bit of there's a few things that could sort of you could do some cleanup on, you know, like for example, um, you know, do we really need a setter and a getter for this? Um, if we're not gonna, you know, if there's no functionality, if there's nothing to wrap around that, right? If there's no, if you're not gonna do saving or loading there, or something like, I don't think yeah. that that's really you know, it, it probably doesn't make sense to have these, you know, whatever, you know, it's only a few lines, right? But the, the less lines, the better, right? Um, I think... Yeah, it, so I just uh, used some of the code from... From TensorFlow. Transformers. Or t yeah, TensorFlow and Transformers. Okay, yeah, because that was... I mean, that's a product of, of that code's been around for so long now um, that that... It, it could also be cleaned up, right? I, oh, didn't we have an open issue for TensorFlow? No, you did that TensorFlow refactor, but there's still there's still probably stuff in there because we then decided we need to get rid of applicable features. And yeah, there's just been a few things. So let's just sort of, let's say, let's just put a comment for general. Let's, let's do some general cleanup. Um, okay. And just because, I mean, I think there's a few things in here that we could just sort of tidy up. Um, and then, do you have the example? I don't believe we have example usage on these guys. Uh, um, yeah, I realized that I haven't added the doc string. Okay. All right. um, so let's remember, and then since this is sort of like a model scikit thing, your doc string is going to go in init.py, so check out model scikit for that. So similar okay. to, since this is similar to model 
Oops, I could. Let's uh, copy what was. Also, I have some doubts regarding the tests. Like I have had, I've added a test. Like there are integration tests and stuff. I don't understand what they mean and what they are. Okay. I've seen that in other models, there are two types of tests. Okay, so yeah, that's okay. Um, okay. Sorry, just finishing that. Okay. Um, so confusion on, let's see. Um, Oh yeah, okay, so now the question is um, integration CLI test and basically, so what is the difference? Async test case and um, daily, okay, no, that's a dumb answer, okay. Um, my my dumb answer is ideally nothing, because um, uh, remember a few weeks ago, I think I threw up a branch, and let's see, where did that branch go? Um, yeah, okay, so a few weeks ago, um, well, it's probably going to be a few months ago now, but um, we threw a branch up here, and yeah, here. Um during a meeting and see it's too tempter okay no oh this was okay i guess we merged this um so you're yeah you guys remember so basically we were like all right okay let's have it you know we're always making temporary directories for things so let's just have async test case be the first thing that it does it you know makes a temporary directory for that test case right so then anything you do is in this new temporary directory um and so then we were talking about how we had to reference files by their relative paths um to the file that you're you're running um with underscore underscore file underscore underscore and, and you know getting the relative path from there um and then we talked about how this is sort of like you know our goal here is that we want to take um we want to take Basically, um, we want async test case to be the same thing as integration CLI test case. Although the problem right now, I think, is because, the, and, and why we want this is because it would have these stacks, which is sort of something that, and this is part of why we need to go through and, and make sure that this is all, this is something that has to be, has to be like consciously done um, because there's some test cases that have stack and a stack. Um, and so, um, um, so let's see. Um, uh, yeah, what are these uh, stack test case? Basically, the, because there's so many things where we use the with statement, this and the integration TL CLI, basically a lot of the CLI tests had a bunch of with statement usage, right? And you can condense a with statement down to a call to stack.intercontext. Um, and, uh, and, that, and that way you don't have this indented with block, right? Um, and therefore, it was the main reason why this was helpful was for these MK temp file and MK temp dir, right? Because we're always creating these stupid temporary files, right? And temporary directories. And in this case, I believe the main thing was, yeah, that we wanted non-existent temporary files. And to do that, we created a temporary directory and oh, maybe it's not in here. Um, yeah, we created a temporary directory and then created a file name within that temporary directory. Because if you do use, um, and I believe this was because of the sources, um, and how um, with 
you know, we have the allow empty flag and stuff, right? And so we were having to create sources that had file names, but were empty files. And so there was, there's a bunch of tests that do this kind of stuff. And basically I got it all condensed down to here. And I mean, the main thing to answer your question is that there, the only difference is that async test case or integration CLI test case has it'll it'll check for the required plugins which is another thing right so if you have other you know if you if you're not in the standard it'll, it'll skip the test case unless those other plugins are installed and then it derives from this async exit stack test case so you have all the you know you can you can create temporary files and temporary directories without using the with statement so that you don't end up with you know giant indented blocks in your test cases and then it's going to throw you into a new um, temporary directory. Like by default, you're going to be operating in a temporary directory um, rather than, you know, whatever the, you know, the top level of DFFML would usually be your working directory. Um, so, but the goal here is eventually to go through and audit the existing test cases and figure out which ones have usage of stack or a stack and then or, you know, don't call super.setup or super.teardown and have a setup and teardown and migrate them over so that, um, you know, all of this functionality is essentially in async test case. Um, because it, we, we use that, temp I mean, there's just so many places where we create temporary files that this, it should all be in one class. Um, but so there's really no difference other than the fact that you get you have access you, you know to whatever methods are in here right um but um like fundamentally right but but in conceptually we're hope hopefully they become the same thing so don't like if you're using one over the other you're use you should be using it because you know you want the mk tempter function or something or you want to have this exit stack created for you or two you know both of the kinds of exit stacks or something you know um well, and that's something that that's something that we need to. I mean, we we might need to document that, but more likely we just need to go and make the change, right? And then then there's not even confusion of you know missing that in the documentation, right? Because the documentation is huge now, so it's not always like we talked about the other time. Not always the most most helpful since it's not super straightforward. And we need to re reorganize things. So um, yeah, we talked about that. So conceptually, not much. We need to merge them into one class eventually. Um, check the implementation for details uh, on for extra methods and or k tempter and mk temp file methods and exit stacks. Um, so let's see all right okay um and then i think i submitted this review okay sweet also like yeah created a new issue regarding the docs if you and himanshu can check that out okay great oops yay trailing white space um yeah we need we have a oh jesus oh god oh god okay um let's look at this what happened um well i guess i'll just click anywhere is this gonna show up or is this what's going on here so uh, it's in operations oh in operations <laughs> okay. All right. How did we do that? How did that happen? How did that happen? Wow. It just like this. Okay. It must be a problem with the docs.py script um, because it's generating headers that are not the right. Or no. Oh, it's because. 
Oh, it's because of the... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the problem. The problem is that we need to switch the headers around in that template. Um, and we need to go through... Uh, when did we last deal with this? We dealt with this before. Um, I wonder if there's an open issue for it, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, okay, so the issue here... There's definitely an open issue for this. Um, the issue here is that... Where's the... All right, so basically, where is, I guess I can show. So the problem is that, that um, DFML operation output. All right, so take, for example, um, yeah, so this guy, right? These are clearly like not the same style of headers that we're using um, other places. Um, you know, the plus, 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 plus. Um, if we look at the model, or let's see, is this, I think we have the same. Well, we don't really do that with the models, do we? So I use dash everywhere. Yeah, because that would be the same thing to do. Um, the problem is that, um, the template, ah, oh, damn it, really? What is this? Which one is this from? Yeah, well, it'll tell us later, I guess. Um, the template docs templates use the, um, or no, oh, it's the docs. It's either docs.py and template, I believe, because you used, um, operations, NLP, operations. Yeah, use the dashes. So what yeah, we need so to do. Yes, numpy doc strings use this. So uh, I forgot that we don't use these. Well, that's that's. I mean, we should change it. Um, because let's see, what are we doing? I mean, we have. What does it look like generated? Is the real question here? Oops. I mean, we need to change it because this is annoying as hell, but we're not going to be able to fix it, right? We're going to have to go through and change them all, right? Um, so, yeah, but this is this is the main problem. Let's make some notes. So the main, the main issue here is that uh, script slash docs.py is creating, is using the underlying somewhere and therefore RST um, Sphinx RST parsing is deciding that um, is a, uh, a bunch of hyphens is a uh, larger or like a Second, it's like a second level header or something. Second level header. Let's see. Yeah, because we've got module template. Yeah, module template is these dashes. So it needs to be like pluses or something. And then we need to go through and change the ones that are pluses. And then these guys are underlines, and then dashes will end up being um, what we're expecting, I think. Um, so let's see. Okay. It's a lot of pluses. Um, it's just in our, let's see, it's just in the main modules. Um, 
And then where else do we have it? Okay, just the main module. All right, well, that means that we haven't don't have documentation for the other operations, um, which is sad, but um, it does mean we have less, uh, less things to worry about. So, um, let's see. Uh, so, uh, is there like a fast way to change that? Let's see. Um, let's see. I need to change all those pluses in there. Mm. Maybe this. Under. Maybe that's all of them. Okay, so we could do um, um, Do this right now. Um, I'll find um, okay, so we want to go and grab the long bit of strings, like so. If we replace this one first, then we're going to end up with like three. We're going to end up with you know just three pluses. So we want to go through and we want to. We, we're writing this for loop that's going to print out the long bit and then you know down the way. And so, uh, so we're going to go through and we're going to grab every Python file in DFFML operations, and we're going to replace. Um, Let's see, and, and hopefully plus is not some kind of weird regex thing. Um, we're going to replace that with... Um, God, we need some way to multiply that. I guess we could just use Python. Um, 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 here's what we can do. Python-c. Um, Yeah, okay. Um, are you following what I'm doing here? The purpose of showing this is because there's always these massive find and replace operations, so hopefully this shows you how one could do that, because like, it's, it's always annoying. And you will run into it, so. Um, all right, so we're gonna look for all those pluses, um, reverse sort them so that we um, print one and like print print the longest one first because we got to replace the longest one first, um, and then I don't know what we're gonna do. Uh, import OS, and then this is like always what I do when I just can't figure out how to do something in Bash is I just do it in Python, right? Because then we we know how to do that, right? Um, and then we can print. And then you got a double escape error. Let's see what we can do. Single quotes dash times. Okay, so we're getting our, our bunch of pluses. Um, we export 
i because you have to export the variable otherwise it's just a variable into bash to get it into the environment of subprocesses and then we're going to create this python process which is going to say okay grab that environment variable and make a bunch of dashes that's the same length um, and then go through and replace the pluses with the dashes um, and let's just see what happens when we do that first um, okay it doesn't like i let's see what is it it's like export i all right i know I'm, there's some better way to do that okay great see this is what we're trying to do here right so then if we run all of these it's gonna find and replace um, all of those um, the pluses with the dashes right so oops dfml dot operation slash operation okay so now if we do git diff okay so we should have changed them all right so if you have to do massive find replace things that's this is like for example well Sudhanshu, I guess I don't know you're, you're doing your your stuff is going to be mostly like pretty code heavy but sometimes sometimes you have something right where you're working on the whole code base and you need to do stuff like this and so find an sed or your friends yes yes um that's that's i know that was long but the point is that you will have to do this so so that is the general way that i go about it you might have a better way but i find find an sed to be a very effective way of doing that um so let's see um oops. let's just see what happens. what did the python workaround do in that okay um Okay, uh, the Python workaround. So basically the point of using Python here was just because if you don't, the, the point of this is if you don't know how to do something in bash, do Python dash C and just write it in Python. That's that's the point. If you're writing some shell stuff and you don't know if you, and you can't figure out how to do it in bash, you can always just write it in Python and you can use Python dash C and you can use semicolons to s separate lines. Um, and the point of this was really just to say, okay, so I, our variable I here is all of these, um, our variable I here was, oops, well now they're gone, um, was all of these, it was just every single, it, it, it formed a, a, you know, it was a bunch of, uh, where did it go? Yeah, it was all of these, right? And then we cut it down, and then what we wanted was we wanted to take these, and for each one of these strings, we wanted to replace it with the same number of minuses, right? We wanted to take the number of pluses and re replace it with the same number of minuses. And so we had to reverse it, because or else if we did this for one first, then we'd end up with uh, minus, 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 and then a few pluses, right? And so, but I don't know how to do, I don't know how to, convert that number of things in bash like i just don't know how to do that so my my go-to is i take it and i write it in python right and so to get it into python you can do dash there's something with like python that's a really great workaround yeah yeah it it's it. saved me hours right yeah okay so i'm glad i'm glad there was something um there was something useful here um there's also this thing um uh, dash x. Oh, this is helpful. So you can put things in the environment variables or um, uh, interpreter. There's something, wait, I don't know, I can't find it right now, but there's something like dash big x and it'll put it somewhere for you. And it's kind of like, where is it? This is, you can you also can do this. See that, yeah. Or, Using Python dash H in bash. Oh, okay. 
dash wait dash h oh yeah oh yeah duh. Python dash h um yeah there's some way there's some way to, to define yeah oh dash yeah maybe not I don't know I swear there used there was something set implementation specific options I think if you just set something it just shows up I can't remember. yeah you can they they end up somewhere um, um, they end up in like some sys somewhere eh, maybe that's not actually as useful um, but yeah I guess you know the environment variables you can always use um, and that's just an export with bash um, but yeah okay so let's see what happened here um, Okay, hopefully it did the right thing, right? Let's see. Okay, yes, I think we did the right thing. So now, yes, and now we're all using the standard NumPy doc strings. Now, um, our, we need to go to make sure that everything, yeah, okay, so we must not be using orgs there. Okay, this is all good, this is all good. Services, this is just like a listing. Okay, so we're good, great. Um, okay. Okay. Um, okay, well, this doesn't fix the trailing white space, but it does fix, um, so fix uh, operations, or no, this is more of a docs. Fix, um, make it so, um, by doc strings work. Okay, so now we don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, and okay, um, white space checker is broken. Okay, um, and then uh, we fixed. Actually, I've added git hooks, so when I do merge master, this shows up the okay. trailing white space one and the. And then I have to do git commit dash n. Oh, do you, you do. That? Okay, yeah. See, we need to add a section to the documentation about um, commit hooks and stuff because that would be helpful, I think, for people to have black check in there and then also trailing white space check and stuff like that because it just helps you before you commit. Um, okay. Um, All right, okay, so, sorry, I know that took a while. Um, so let's see, uh, and then we wanted to talk about um, accuracy plugin. Okay, and... Uh, yes, yes, so uh, right now what I have done is uh, I have basically removed the uh, accuracy method in all of the models. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, so I was actually, uh, like, uh, except for the uh, TensorFlow hub and the trans transformer models or uh, the uh, I have not removed the accuracy method and yeah okay and also like I was thinking of uh, wrapping uh, uh, scikit learn uh, model evaluation like metrics mm -hmm. plugin I think we have so, uh, another issue for that um oh uh, yes I think yeah but I think we need to mainly get you know get the get the whole the big the big project part of this one done um because because or else it's gonna i mean you could go do that right but and and then have them in there but you know you won't yes. be able to use so, them so <laughs> yeah so actually i like i got like distracted by that like so i was thinking like i have removed now the accuracy method and like where should i implement it so i started looking in the scikit learn metrics method Okay. And that's how it all went. 
Okay, so you've been looking at um, wrapping yeah. the scikit um, metrics. Um, yes, so I've so actually shared a link on uh, Gitter, so you can look at it. So that's what I was like planning to wrap in the accuracy plugin. Okay, that's weird. My Gitter wasn't refreshing. Okay. Yeah. So this is like the one stop for all the accuracy thing that we want. Sweet. Sweet. Um, so are you going to do this kind of like we did? Um, let's see. Are you going to do this kind of like we did the scikit models? Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm planning Sweet. to do it that way. That way. That sounds great. That's That sounds perfect. All right. So let's put that in the notes. Um, yeah, that sounds like a great plan. All right, so. Uh, so it's like, should I uh, work on uh, the scikit part, uh, or like, should I get uh, complete get completed with the the current PR I'm working on? Um, the current. Issue. I mean, you could do either or, right? Um, I think I think that I think that you know for this to. At the end of the day, you know, you could do, you could end up doing a bunch of work on that, and um, but like you need to to have that work get used, you're gonna have to finish the other one, right? So, so you could do it in any yes, order, right. right? If you're getting sort of yeah. right, because it's um, it's a long process, right? And if you're getting bored yes. doing one, you might as well switch over do the other one for a while and then come back to it, right? Um, so you know, it's sort of it's sort of whatever whatever you're feeling on now, right? Um, yes. Since 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 you're yeah you're it's 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 all it's all up to you on that one right um, yeah. so uh, uh, the one thing are you um, also looking for um, so you said you removed some of the models right so yeah are you waiting for guidance from Himanshu the, yeah so okay. for the NER models and the Okay, that's what it's I was thinking. Help. Okay, um, and the main reason why um, I was suggesting that we get guidance from Himachu on this is because um, because um, I'm not. I can't. Well, why was that? Um, oh, because of the t the main when you're gonna you're gonna. Well, I guess the next step is modify the test cases. Um, but mainly. Yeah, is there just just and now is a good time to do it? But so let me go to the main issue here. So this is for everybody who hasn't seen. It, this is the plan for the accuracy scoring plugin stuff. Um, and so you've done all these, right? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, those are all all done. Okay. Except for TensorFlow Hub and Transformer. Okay, TensorFlow Hub and Transformers. Okay, and so Himanshu. Um, okay, well, yeah, the removing accuracy does make sense because we're going to have to do it, redo it. But mainly, the 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 goal here was to have a checkpoint and say what what makes sense as accuracy for the for the NLP models, right? Like. Um, I'm like, do do these do these psychic metrics measures of accuracy also make sense um, for NLP models? Um, and because I'm not I'm not familiar. Let's see. I guess your yeah. Do do they make sense or does your validation data look a lot different? Because I can't remember where. Let's see. Like, will we need custom accuracy things for NLP? Is the is the question here? Custom accuracy scores, right? That are you're on mute, Himanshu. I mean, you can go ahead. Okay. This is. I think this might answer my question. Custom accuracy. 
Um, let's see. In the PyTorch models, do we use a different approach for finding the accuracy? Yeah. Okay. That's kind of this is kind of what I was thinking here. So that's this is mainly the point of this is to have a check in, right, and say what are we going to need to do here because we may need to we you know we should we should update this issue and say that we may be taking out these um right because we're about we're removing this this code right so the question is do we take this code and do we move it somewhere else right or do we just delete it um and it sounds like the the answer is that that the ones that we're adding in are not going to be applicable to this so we need to add these as you know their own custom accuracy scores um so so we can basically take this code and move for example i'm in qa model right now so we can take the code that exists here and we can move this into um we can move this into a new um a new class and we could even do it in the same file for now um but basically just take the code out and and put it you know, don't don't remove the code completely, right? Because now now we know that you know for then let's enumerate that list. So we had, um, you said all, well, PyTorch we haven't merged yet, um, but we'll have to do that. So because that will get merged soon here. So, um, well, PyTorch. Okay, so um, for uh, vision and NLP models, um, we need to, um, we need to um, take or move the existing code uh, into uh, an accuracy scoring score class. Um, and uh, for use in, wait a minute, uh, okay, yeah, I guess this is also, why is phase, phase three, okay, HTTP service needs to come after all of this, um, phase, for um, thing. Um, uh, hey John, uh, sorry to interrupt, but I have to drop now. Okay. Yeah. No worries. Thank you for joining today. Bye. Bye. Have a good one. Okay. Um. So yeah. So for NLP and vision. Um. Yeah. So take those, put them in their own class, right? So you still have the code around, right? And then you'll, when you go to everything except uh, ones where they, we took out the accuracy method in phase three. So does this make sense? Uh, yes, so for like only for these three models, like I'll have to like move the uh, existing accuracy to a new file, right? Yeah, and you could even keep it in the same file, right? You just oh, need yeah, to pull okay. it out into a class, right? Yes. Um, yes. Sweet. Okay. Yeah. And then basically, um, yeah, just for just for now, that's all we really need to do, right? And then within the test cases, we're just going to make sure that we're using that class as well, um, and we're probably going to need to, you know, register those classes as as entry points. So. Um, Let's see. Yes. Um, oops. Yeah. So I don't don't forget to register them as entry points uh, for my tests. Um, let's see. Yeah. Okay. So then the next, because the next big thing here is that. Um, yeah, okay, so we've updated, yeah, we updated all of this, 
we didn't okay we may need to go through an update uh, we probably should have done that a little bit earlier but we need to go through an update um, the command line um, the command line stuff in dffml slash cli slash ml um, because you're going to need to update um, well let's see i guess that will be in phase four because that's going to be when you start updating the tests um, so let's see <laughs> yeah if you want when when you think i need a break from this massive clusterfuck of, of <laughs> accuracy and models then you go you go and implement some psychic accuracies right yes. um so let's see um okay so uh okay so need update diff well, slash cli slash ml to py um first so that um, CLI uh, tests and examples uh, will be able to uh, specify which accuracy score to use. This is going to be great. Okay. Sweet. Um, let's see. Cool. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about on that? Uh, no, thanks. That's it. Okay, great. Cool. Thank you. All right, Himanshu, um, do we still have you? Are you? Uh, yeah. Okay, great. Um, so, okay, we just needed to upload the change log. Did we do that already? I feel like I remember you saying. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. Yeah, we merged that, didn't we? Uh, okay. Um, so. Oh, yeah, you merged it. Okay, working on example usage. So, do you need to talk about anything, really? Uh, no, 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 no. Currently, I'm working, so there is nothing. Okay, cool. And then, Agen, I will, I will review. Let's see. So, let me just make sure because I, I'm still, I'm, I'm in need of. I mean, I'm, 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 uh, I'm behind. I'm behind. So, let's see. So, these are. Okay. Pick it single. Let me just make sure. So let me, everybody, please give me a recap of of what I owe everyone. So I will look over all of these um, pull requests. But is there anything else that I'm not thinking of? Everything is in the pull request form. Okay. Yeah, this uh, in the last week uh, you were talking about creating the tutorial for entry points. To okay. Yeah, that's a big thing. Okay. That because I know that's going to give so so PR review and entry point. Okay. Sweet. All right. Well, thanks everyone. And then um, so I'll get on those and let's see. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, that's the only actionable item. Um, okay, yeah, that's still still waiting. All right, sweet. Thank you, everyone, and I'll uh, talk to you on Friday or on Gitter. Have a good one. Thanks. Yeah. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you.